Play Day number 10, Foggy vs. Lin. The best night elf from Europe against... Nowadays, is he the best orc in the world? It's been really close in the rankings between him and Focus and maybe... Okay, someone didn't really get that close. He's been losing again a couple of games. But I'm always excited to especially see Lin play against Night Elf. I feel like he's been innovating quite a bit recently, where first it was Fly to really show the way. Nowadays it seems to be Lin, who has picked up the mantle. And with that, let's get into our first game. Keeper first for Foggy. Nowadays, many Night Elves, perhaps even most, will play Demon Hunter and Talons on this map. I've seen Foggy try it a little bit, but it uh, feels like he hasn't quite gotten the hang of the Talons so much as compared to some other players. And Lin is playing the perfect players counter here at the beginning. There's a bit of mind games going on on this map, especially on the Orc side. Depending on whether you're facing a Blade Master or a uh, a demon hunter or a keeper, you would prefer to have different opening builds. And that means that against the demon hunter, you would love to have a shop early to go for heal selves early. Whereas against the keeper, you can skip the heal selves. You don't have to creep or trade rather so much X HP back and forth. And you can skip the shop for a while and get a faster tech going. So Lin seems to have started off with a perfect build, having the right read. Perhaps feeling that Foggy isn't quite... Uh, so experienced with the talents again at the moment. As for example, Colorful would be, who's been looking really, really strong with it. Foggy now trying to harass some peons, and at least two of them are gonna go down here for sure. He denied the experience on both, if I saw that right. And that's very important. Preventing that level 2 is what you love to do here as the orc, if you can. And we're gonna have to see how painful this is gonna be later on. Oh, trying to trigger the end snare on the wisp. Oh, look at that. A Lin knows all the tricks. Yeah. Illusion's extremely good. Always an extremely good item. And especially on this map with the creep shenanigans you can do. And also in this matchup with... Uh, Trying to creep, for example, a Merc Camp, like we see right here. Oh, Lin going for double Mercs. Foggy sees this camp happening. He's trying to creep jacket, but he's only got a level 1 Keeper. It's not really that scary. First Entangle gets abolished right away. However, the Shadow Priest is very squishy, so that unit might go down. Second Abolish. Oh, the Ensnare on the Hunter, so that one can't actually chase. And Lin, at the moment, still able to keep all of his units safe. Great early game for Lin. It's honestly an insanely good early game for Lin. We have Keeper only in level 1. Not a single unit lost. This is pretty outrageous. Lin has spent a lot of money on tier 1, so... He may have to delay his uh, lodge by a little. Or maybe the Shadow Hunter. But look at that progress. Wonderful item as well for the Blade Master, level 2.6 now. And the Keeper not even level 2. This is truly disastrous. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah. How's Foggy gonna get out of this one? Foggy needs to get some kills right now, and then get up an expansion early. But because this early game was so perfect for Lin, it's hard to imagine how that's even going to happen. You can also try to take aggressively some camps away from the opponent, like this one. It's always wonderful to do with the Alchemist. Use the Acid Bomb, snipe the consumable items early on. Big Mana Potion, Scroll the Beast. Lots of great items there to be found. The player's forces are under attack. Oh, you see the second attempt of the Merc Camp creep. Gonna 
pull in the Murlocs this time himself. And this is the opening that Foggy's looking for. He needs to get something done here. Especially the Berserker kill would be huge. And there we go. Entangle the Berserker right away. Scourge Bone Chimes, of course, would be great to find for Lin. He's got a early level 3 Blade Master. I wonder if he's gonna skill on this one. Oh, I second Shadow Priest to save the Berserker. Running away with the scroll of speed. I think he's gonna get chased down in the end. If you can save it though, that would be Players a pretty sick attack. save. And of course the biggest issue you have a foggy is with this strategy, Keeper Hunts, you will fall off heavily in the late game, so you need this expansion to give you an economic edge. But I have not seen any expansion anywhere close by. So Foggy may have to try to stabilize on tier 3 1 base, maybe? A player's forces are under attack. Oh, it's gonna be daytime in a moment. The Berserker! The Berserker! Oh no! Berserker got killed behind the red camp. But also the Huntress is gonna get caught. Purge gonna ensure the kill. It's level 2 Windwalk, by the way. Something I'm not always the biggest fan of, because it's gonna be a lot weaker later on in the late game fights. But in this kind of game, where Foggy doesn't have an expansion, and where it's all about creeping right now, this actually makes a lot of sense, especially when you have a lot of mana. I think that was absolutely the right call by Lin. And to be fair, <laughs> whatever he would have skilled right now probably would have said this was absolutely the right call by Lin, because Lin is amazing. And has been looking very good also recently in this matchup. He had struggled a long time against Night Elf, but recently has looked much, much better against them. Oh, the Blade Master though needs to be a little careful. Losing the heroes here would be the easiest way to give up this advantage. Eslin now almost is level 3 Shadowhunter. It's going to be a big power spike for him. But the actual army strength for Lin might not be the greatest because he still has two Shadow Priests left over from the early game and uh, they also become less valuable over time because they don't have much mana to dispel and of course they're especially squishy and easy to kill Foggy now starting to cobble together a pretty good army. Archers and Hunts, we of course seen it many times before, but the levels is where it's lacking. Only double level 2s on these Night Elf heroes. Scroll the Beast popped, however, and that's gonna add in a lot more damage to this Night Elf army. And gonna trigger Lin to disengage. Happy with having popped the scroll, having bought time, most importantly to get up this expansion now, as the expo for Lin should be only around a minute, perhaps, or so away. A are under attack. Oh, and he manages to seal the item as well. Not quite the last hit, but gets the Ankh, which can be absolutely Wonderful to have on a Blade Master will oftentimes be quite exposed in the front line. You guys will know that, especially if you've seen Fly play before. Fly, of course, who will be facing Happy later on today. I know that this question comes up quite a bit, by the way. We're going to be alternating hosts between Netties and War 3 champions. This game right now is being played on Netties, so Lin's certainly favorite here. Later on, on War 3 Champions, it's going to be favoring Foggy then. So, Game 2, War 3 Champions, Game 3, Netties, then back to War 3 Champions, and so on. A player's forces are under attack. Lin looking in a wonderful position right now. At the double level 3 heroes, 
looking towards double level four. Let's get the expansion standing, shop in position, everything well defended. It's gonna get a big item here. This is Foggy's only chance, this attack right here. Foggy has to have a smashing success right now to set up a chance. Is under siege. He's gonna take out the shop in the main base right away. Might even get some burrows here. No reinforced defenses. That perhaps the first mistake by Lin this game. Unless you want to count that Berserker loss a mistake, but I think that would be a little much. And the position here for Foggy is great. The archers in the back, perfectly protected, cannot be reached at all. Foggy always very diligent about bringing the wisps into the fight as well. We see that here again. A lot of mana was drained, but we still have some purges left, however. Shed Honor is completely out of mana, so no more Serpent Wards in a little while. The front line for Lin is still looking good. Blade Master very tanky. No Scourge Bone Chimes, of course, especially for the Blade Master. Amazing. The lifesteal regeneration over time helps out tremendously. Kind of surprised that Lin didn't set up a new shop right here. But he pops a second scroll of feeling again. A huge effect. The Blade Master is about to get level 4. Doesn't have any mana, so Mirror Image probably wouldn't do anything here. So, level 2 crit, perhaps. Perhaps next on the docket. Oh, Blade Master far forward. Gets to level 4. He's almost got the mana now for Mirror Image, but he's super low HP. And with the Keeper falling, this should be game. Especially as the Alchemist follows. Yep, that is indeed GG. And uh, Foggy off to a rude awakening here on this Sunday, the Day of the Lord. Len playing uh, pretty much a perfect game, I'd say. This looked pretty close to perfect. And the thing about LR is, as good as it can be for talents, it can be really rough for the Keeper if you don't get a decent start, if you don't get that level 2 quickly, and that level 3 in a timely manner. And that is the reason why most Night Elves nowadays... Um, ...are playing the Talons on this map. Like I said earlier, especially Colorful does it all the time, also Lawlight normally. But Moon and Foggy still mostly seem to hold out there. Foggy had tried it a little bit. I think it was also here in the Rejuve Cup, wasn't it? It's against Soen, right? Mm, yeah, indeed. Indeed, against Soen he played the Talons. But here today, at least on the first uh, encounter on Last Refuge, he didn't. Maybe Foggy feels that Lin is just too well experienced and strong against Talons. And I wouldn't blame him for that. Certainly true that Lin is extremely good against Talons. Just in general, the best orc versus Nile in the world at the moment. I think that's clearly the case by now. So yeah, Foggy still has his work cut out for him. Foggy used to be insanely good with talents. That's true. Um, that was quite some time ago, though. That was during Talon meta. Once the Keeper was fully established, Foggy did completely switch to Keeper, Hunt's expansion, and all that stuff. Just like Moon did. We've seen that many times by Foggy before, that he's really heavily inspired by Moon's plays and by Moon's strategies, specifically. Much more so, perhaps, influenced than many of the other top Night Elves. But as I said, map number two coming up is going to be probably a lot better for Foggy. As now, we're going to be going to uh, War 3 Champions. What map he's going to pick, that's a different question. So Echo Isles should certainly be vetoed. That's normally always the Night Elves veto to go for. Concealed Hill, especially we see quite a bit of in this matchup. I think... Lin is insanely good on Concealed Hill, though. I think he has really, really mastered that map. I think it might be the right call to veto 
concealed against Lin. Lin also had a very close series against uh, Lawlight, right? Yeah, it was a draw, 3-3. Three to three, And Lin won both concealed hill games. But of course, it's also a lot about player preference. Maybe if Foggy feels comfortable on Concealed Hill himself, he should go for it and not just eliminate it because of uh, what the opponent prefers. If then, in exchange, he'll have to play on a map where he doesn't feel so at home, like what would that be? Autumn Leaves, maybe. And if I see this right, I believe it should be Tidehunters for map number two. This is also quickly becoming a, uh, a standard map in the best of three in this matchup, where orcs can absolutely play a Farseer strategy. Don't have to, but it is possible. And once again here, it's going to be valuable to take a look at the games that we saw before of Lin on this map. And I think against Lawlight, he went back to Blademaster, if I remember right. Yes, they played one game on Tidehunters. Oh, I remember that one. They played one game on Tidehunters, it was map 2, and he didn't play Fasir, which is almost the norm on Tidehunters nowadays. He played Blademaster, and he was looking in a really good position until he lost the Blade. And when the Blademaster lost... When, when the Blademaster was lost, in a very unnecessary manner, Lawlight turned it around. That was a great series by them, by the way. On Playday 4. Thank you very much, Gucci Versace, with a three-month resub. All right, we're about to be ready for our... Oh, wait, I think they had a rehost, maybe? Yeah, hosting lobbies between different regions and War 3 champions can be a bit difficult. Because there can be connection errors and then the game can bug, so... Um, this might take a moment. Who won? I'm watching without sound. True, I didn't update. I always forget to update the score. Lin, one map number one. There you go, my deaf friend. Now you know as well. All right, since we have a moment of time, I guess we can look at the standings now. Should be another two minutes or so before the game begins. And the world, the world champion, Europe's hottest export is standing at the top of the bracket at the moment. And he could be caught up to by Lin. Lin is the only guy who's going to have the chance of also making nine points after five play days. Because Lin at the moment, three victories, one draw. Would end up with four wins, one draw. Just like Happy if he wins today. <clears throat> and behind them, we have Chemico, Colorful. Both with some wins, some draws. Colorful, one loss. Lawlight so far with a lot of draws. One win, three draws, one loss. Exactly the same as Focus. Which I think is uh, perfectly fitting. Because these two have been very close to each other over the years in competition. And also in results, kind of. I guess Lawlight looked a little bit better than <clears throat> Focus. In terms of results overall. And 1-0, to zero, perhaps... A bit disappointing so far in this Rejuvenation Cup. Only one win, two draws, two losses, so four points for him. And as mentioned earlier, Foggy with one win, one draw, two losses, only three points. Fly with one win, 
got that over f foggy, right? Yeah, he got that over foggy. Uh, two points for him. And so in. So surprising. I remember most of you, if not all of you, were there for the War 3 Champions Finals, where so in looked so damn strong. But in the Rejuvenation Cup, for whatever reason, it really hasn't worked out so far for the Korean Orc. As I said, after today, there's going to be a one and a half week break for Rejuvenation Cup because of the Chinese New Year festivities. And then we're going to be back on February 10th for the second half of the Rejuvenation Cup. When is Happy versus Lin going to be, by the way? It's probably the hypest game that we have in here. Oh, on the second last play day. February 19th. That one cannot be missed. $20,000 prize money, of course, for the Rejuvenation Cup. Almost 8000 for first place and 4000 for second place. So you really want to make sure you have a strong season here to be able to get into that high prize money ranking. And yeah, they have titled it Season 1. So Season 2, hopefully, will be coming later. All right, now we finally have the hosting situation fixed and the game underway. Let's continue with map number two. <clears throat> As we said, Tight Hunters will be the battle place. Battle place? That doesn't sound right. The battlefield. I feel like there's another word that my brain is Operation trying to search for that I can't locate right now. Anyways, map number two. Keeper first for Foggy. I didn't see Lin's hero. Wait. Was it Blade or Fasir? Both playable on this map. Fasir on most maps not going to be really too strong. But here it definitely can be played pretty well. That looks like a Fasir, right? I think so. A player's force is all under attack. There we go. Farseer going for the green cam right away. Farseer and one grunt into what should be headhunters. Foggy trying to creep up to level 2 as quickly as he can. It's gloves and ring. Really not the best items. But for a second hero actually, especially the ring, could be pretty good. Oh, Farseer steals one last hit and is almost now level 2. And on level 2, of course, Chain Lightning is going to become available. This is going to be relevant. Oh, nice Wisp Detonate. I think he got the experience for the Wolves there. I think Lin was perhaps a bit too slow on the resummon. And the Keeper putting in a bit of chip damage against the Farseer. Town is under siege. Foggy recently has been playing Mass Archers against the Headhunter's style, which is going to be especially helpful in case of uh, Tower Push. But with how good Foggy has looked against that recently, I would not expect Lin to be going for that Tower Push this time around, but we'll see. Tier 2 starting for Foggy. Whoa! It's a lot later for Foggy. Did you forget to tech here for a little bit? That's like at least a minute that Lin is ahead on the tier 2. That's a really big deal. But at least Fari can safely creep here at the green. He's almost level 3 now. And level 3, of course, is the big, big level up. Where headhunters can be killed very easily with a level 2 entangle. A player's forces are under attack. And this is looking good for Foggy, right? Oh, wow. 
great items now as well. Triple damage edition and ring. These are actually really, really good items for Foggy. Then has to pull back his units. He must know the keeper is now level 3. He's going to scout and confirm. That's a shadow hunter second. Lodge, of course, for the shaman coming. But this keeper's on a mission. He's got full mana. He's going to go for a staff as well. Elin is trying to find the keeper, trying to perhaps uh, prevent him from entering the base, but he's going to enter the base all right. And there we go. This is, of course, the strength of the keeper. Shadow Armor probably going to have to go for level 1 heal wave. To try to save some of these berserkers, headhunters. Alright, 100 goes down. But if only 100 falls, it's honestly not the end of the world. So what's the second hero for Foggy? Panda, Demon, Alchemist, all possible. Our player's forces are under attack. It is the Alchemist. A lot of damage on the fast here right away. Might be forced to TP with one more entangle. It's pretty close. Only one shaman out so far, so really not that much dispel to work with. When the repair on the burrow, perhaps a little bit late. This burrow is certainly going to fall. Oh, and he brings the wisp for the detonate right away. I like that. Shadow hunter, lots of damage. Oh, trying to heal and save himself. Oh my god, are you serious? Almost died right there. Alchemist also, or oh, the uh, Farseer also getting attacked, but he's got the cloak. Saves himself with the cloak. And now Foggy's completely out of mana. Super close to the exchange right here. That's from the far series. Gonna kill one more archer. And Foggy perhaps overextending just a little bit. Wow. Foggy was playing this super aggressively. How much did he kill? Wait, didn't he did he not kill anything? Beautiful defense here by Lin. Are under Saving the shadow. I lost the burrow, I guess. Oh, and again, Lin forgot a unit at the creep camp. It's the grunt this time, who got slowed and killed. Lin wants to creep the natural here as well. He's very close to level 3 farce here. Which is good against archers, but not so useful against the dryads, of course. Oh, he keeps on playing aggressively. This is pretty crazy, man. A lot of damage again on the farce here, but the Cloak of Shadows has been absolutely wonderful. Foggy oh, still doesn't have the Wisp at the lab. That's probably a bit of a mistake. The Farseer is about to get level 3. I wonder if he's still going to go for Wolves. Seems like that might be a mistake with Dryads now already on the field. Raider comes in, getting targeted right away. The Ensnare on the Dryad. This could be a lot of losses for both players right here. Who's got more damage output? Farseer gets the level 3. But now, of course, the downside is... Farseer's wolves don't really do much anymore. Foggy's again using all of his mana. It's a very bloody exchange. <clears throat> 41 supply for Foggy. Great speed scrolls also by Lin. Trying to save as much as he can. Now the Shadow Owner gets level 3. And now we have level 2 Serpent Wards. And that's going to add in a lot more damage. But also more experience. If Foggy kills him off. Players' 
last heal spray the alchemist just barely surviving here gonna have to pull the tp foggy gets another raider and maybe even a shaman yes these shaman of course very squishy and this exchange seems to have gone better for foggy especially if foggy should be able to go tier three behind this he might look really good but foggy is only tier two for now more and more and more dryads coming a player's forces are under attack. Another set on is level 3. And this is gonna make the Orc army a lot stronger against the Dryads with the Serpent Wards, of course. And the other set on gets level 4 and some mana items to have level 2 heal wave as well. That might be the moment where the balance flips. Although, of course, the Farseer is going to be a huge liability now, this whole game. Well, I guess the sort of accuracy, not bad. Need some upgrades, though, on the Dryads. Especially armor upgrades are desperately needed. And there we go. Armor upgrade coming. And Fog is a 50 supply again. Playing a very aggressive style here. I imagine it's going to go for a heal scroll. Maybe even two. And look for that next fight. And this is always the awkward stage with the Farseer. What does that hero do now anymore? The answer is not much. Just a couple of right clicks. A town is under siege. Yes, for this tournament we have to use a Chinese clean feed. So we don't have our own camera control, we don't have our own overlay, unfortunately. But we still have the in-game action, which is the most important. Big camp here for Lin. What's he gonna get? Big consumable right there. Heal award, mana stone, even health stone, all very, very strong. Oh, but Lin may want to go for a counterattack. He's got a Book of the Dead, which is very bad against mass dryads. Forces are under attack. Now, very surprised that Lin doesn't have reinforced defense yet. Oh, I think it just finished. I think it finished just a second ago, right there. Foggy's gonna have to TP back home. He's got way less building damage. There's no way he can take this base trade. Oh my god. The Serpent Ward with the last hit gets the Moonwell as well. So three Moonwells taken out. And a TP traded. That was certainly a good exchange for Lin, but he's not got any healing at the moment. Oh, or did he remake a shop in the back? Oh yeah, I did remake a shop. Good anticipation here by Lenny knows the next attack might be coming in in just a moment. In fact, even an Ancient of War is part of this fight, but Foggy's going to be supply stuck for a long time, so he can't remake Dryads for quite some time here. Shadowhunter Clarity running. And he's got a mana potion as well. And keep an eye on that Shadowhunter. If he gets level 4, it's going to be a very strong level up. Which seems to be only a matter of time. The heal spray though, definitely helping from the Alchemist in the back. Lin gonna reposition. Speed scroll trying to fall back. He has one burrow here in front. Where he could put some peons into. A thousand gold for Lin, by the way. Where'd that come from? Great positioning. Great base build also by Lin. Making sure he's not getting stuck too easily between his buildings. The important thing there is, you need to leave a space between your main and the burrows. Both players just massing on tier 2. It's a lot of trains. Also more experience, of course, for Lin if he gets the purges here, which seems like he will. Shadowhunter now very close to level 4. Yeah, we just heard the level up. That must have been level 4. Peons are on point with the repair right here. I mean, they don't have to repair anymore. They can hop into the burrow. 
And this defensive position is starting to look better and better for Lin. Both players still around 50. Both with a decent bank. Lin may have just broken. Oh, he might be making a Demolisher here, actually. Demolisher in this siege situation would be really good. Yeah, there it is. You can also combine that with the Raiders. Using Snare on the Dryad, then it can't move anymore, and then a Demolisher will do full damage. But one has to be very careful with the Raider positioning, they are very squishy. Chain Lightning is not finding a bounce target, it's only the Alchemist. He's getting hit right there. He's got committed. By Foggy, I'm not sure if it was the first or second one. It was the first. Okay, so he got the second on the Alchemist. <clears throat> and Lin may be chasing a bit too far right here. Love the end snares, by the way. Always limiting the heal uh, wave capabilities. Both players are losing a lot of units. The Foggy is about to run out of mana. Oh, the Coda Beast falling would be a very big deal. Lin, I think, went a bit too far right there. He chased too far outside the main, especially when the Shadow Hunter didn't have mana anymore. Oh, and he made a second Demolisher. Okay. Foggy's still in upkeep. 58 supply for him. The problem for Foggy is, if the Shadow Hunter gets level 5, these Dryads are gonna become very useless very quickly. And there's absolutely no resources for Foggy to go into upkeep here. Uh, into tier 3, excuse me. Has Happy already played? No. Happy's game is going to be coming up after this one. He'll be playing against Fly. Attack. Of course, first this best of 6 is going to have to finish. Oh, that seems to be in a very bad position right here. Foggy comes in with a nice creep jack. And the Dryad's getting healed up. Very nicely by the heal spray here once again. Oh, and the creeps are getting involved. This could be Foggy tying up the series. But it's not quite over yet. Fox here trying to do what he can, but the wolves absolutely useless. The keeper's now level 5, I think. Oh, here comes the next heal spray. Uh, the heal scroll, I mean. Foggy always focusing the Serpent Wards quickly, and Foggy must have this. Yep, there it is. GG called, and Foggy takes the 1-1 one, one and ties it up. And I think that's Lim giving the game away a little bit. I feel like he could have done that better. He held on in the main very well for a long time, but once he had the first Demolisher, it seemed like he looked a little bit overconfident, moving out a bit too far. The Raiders got ahead of the main army by too much. With the Raiders, you always got to be careful. They can kind of work against you in a way, because they're faster than the rest of your army, especially faster than the Kodo, and they walk out of range and they're overexposed. You always need to pay very close attention to them and kind of pull them back. What he should have probably done is just keep a Raider barely in range for Ensnare, use one Ensnare, and then work on one Dryad at a time, and play it very patiently. But uh, he got baited there a little bit too much into the middle. And then with heal spray, with heal scrolls, and importantly, always taking out the serpent wards right away. Foggy was able to get that win. And Foggy ties it up. He had to pretty much get the win right there. Because that was on his server, if you will, on War 3 Champions. Now for map number 3, we're going to be going back to Netties. And the map for that should be Concealed Hill or Northern Isles, normally. I saw there was one game also against Lawliad where Lin allowed Amazonia to make it through, which 
did not go so well. Amazonia normally a very, very hard map for Orc to play in this matchup. Tiebreaker after 3-3? Three three. Uh, no. If it's going to be a 3-3 three three score, then we're going to have a draw and one point for each player. Uh, we're not going to have a second set. But I think you were probably referring to something else. My prediction, fly 4-0 and against Happy. Easy clap. That would surprise me. That would surprise me a lot. Yeah, Foggy hasn't been looking too successful so far in the Rejuvenation Cup. Especially after coming off of a third place finish in War 3 Champions. Him and Soen, for them it doesn't seem to be working too well. But the second place finisher, Happy, is looking very strong indeed. We'll be seeing him later, of course, against Fly. Fly, who has also not been looking his strongest as of late. It's Remo casting, so maybe Happy will lose one or two fiends for the whole series. <laughs> hey, the Remo cursing Happy's opponent's uh, era seems to be over, because I was there for the War 3 Champions Finals. But all right, let's get into map number three. And this is a bit unusual, the way this works in this tournament series. So we have... Uh, Two separate map vetoes for two best of threes, sort of. But it can also kind of overlap in the first best of three series. So we can see two times the same maps in the first three maps. Which is a bit weird, but that's the way it is. So it's a first year again. I was wondering if perhaps this time we were... Oh, oops. My nose is bleeding all of a sudden. What the hell? Oh, one second chat. A player's forces are under attack. So Lin may have a different creep route here. If you want to contest the natural from the Night Elf, you can try to creep their green first and then go over to their gold mine right away. That a might be the attempt here. Of course, remember, we are on ladies right now. So Ping is favoring Lin. And with that, maybe he's hoping that he's going to be able to more easily steal some last hits here. gets level 2 regardless. A player's forces are under attack. And I'll say again, this looks like a pretty good early for Foggy so far. I mean, it's of course very, very early days. Thank you very much, Darkwing Duck, for the 56 month resub. Town is 
under siege. And already Lin has to be careful here with his units. This keeper with a tangle always gonna be a big threat. Thank you, Just Ross, with the 43 months resub. Thank you. Partial level 2. Oh, he almost stole the last hit. Oh, that was so close. Wait, two grunts? He's not playing headhunters? He's just playing fastier grunts? Razor Man style? <laughs> really? Players' forces are under attack. It's oh my god! It's Farseer grunts, Raider shaman. It's actually Razor Man style. Amazing. Oh Jesus! It won't stop bleeding. What the hell? Player's forces are under attack. All right, what do we have here? So it's a panda this time. No alchemist. Which, of course, most importantly, means no heal spray for the dryads. Keeper did make it to level 3, would love to find the orc army creeping, and will find it, I believe. Oh, going for the Shadow Hunter right away. Huh. Couldn't he have killed a grunt? I might not. This might be level 2 treants if I see this right. Pasha, in the meantime, has killed two archers. And... The Shadow Knight defends in the main pretty easily. Gets level two. And Foggy again, going for Dryads. Player's forces are under attack. Seems like Foggy isn't having the easiest of times here, leveling up the panda. With two archers having died earlier, the creep speed at the moment not that high. Oh, and the fire's just being very annoying. Casting the shop again. I'm feeling pretty strong right now. Going for a tier 2 expo. Aware of his power spike right now with Shaman, Raiders, and Shadowhunter, who might be getting level 3 in a Players moment. Oh, but big mana push it. Great find for the panda, indeed. What about the heal scrolls? Heal scrolls also hugely important. Foggy especially loves going for these heavily ahead of a big push. There we go, level 3 acquired. We'll be on both second heroes here in just a moment. And Lin does get the first heal scroll. Doesn't have too many units though. Two grunts, two raiders, two shaman. That's it so far. Oh, but he finds the creep jack. And we do have a Baldish magic, but not too much mana for it. First run connected to the fire hitting nicely. That's what he got a heal scroll for. Oh, 
for the panda, still has quite some mana to work with. Let's not forget about the big mana potion here as well. They can get some kills, but doesn't want to overextend. Expansion close to being finished, and on the way back he can get perhaps the second heal scroll. Not sure exactly what the cooldown there is at the moment. A bit more experience as well. And with the way he's falling back, it looks like he got that heal scroll. Maybe. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, it seems like he didn't. So this heal scroll should go to Foggy. And it's gonna make a pretty big difference. Alright, this is the big fight. This should be the decision of map number three. Love the shot that Lin has coming up in the back, by the way. It's gonna be very important on the Shadow Hunter. Big man, I'm off potion committed though. Heal scroll on Foggy, he's using his items quickly. Panda trying to line up the perfect breath of fire. Oh, huge damage. Also, some dryads going down. And level four on the shadow. Oh, that's big. Level two heal wave now, along with level two serpent words. Well, in the shop at the expansion, they're actually going to get cancelled. Staff back on the panda. Trying to mana up as quickly as he can. Does he have a telly staff? Yes, he does. Alright, Foggy interrupts mining at the expansion for now, but... Lin's got two mana potions. And it's got some heal salves running here as well. Love the engine of war that Foggy's bringing in as well. Sure if summoning the wolves is the right idea. Maybe they can soak up some damage here and there. Panda also got a mana potion. He's about to be level 4 on the panda. Ancient of War is actually getting taken out by the raiders fairly quickly. Mana potion, by the way, in Lin's shop is going to be on cooldown for a long time, so... It's hard to recover mana now in the shadow. Oh, it's still very tense. Kind of surprised that Lin isn't going into upkeep. He could afford it. 500 gold on him. Oh, he got the next heal scroll with the bars here. That's big. And he even bought a tele staff, I think, to get back in here faster. And here we go. Now Lin is coming in. He has got the perfect moment. He's got more mana on the Shadow Hunter as well, but honestly, not that much mana, all things considered. Panda's got two more Breath of Fire, given enough time. Target fire now on the Panda, but the staff for him must be ready. He's also a tanky boy with that belt. Okay, gives over the TP. Boy, he gets another Raider. This game is not over yet. Foggy still has a decent chance here, I think. And now, a race for the shop. Who's gonna get the next heal scroll? And is it available, even? Oh, Lin going for pillage right away. He's ready to start the counterattack. That's probably smart. Foggy really needs a heal scroll. The thing is, the expansion is already very damaged for Lin, and it's got a panda as well, so this expansion might very well be toast. But the quick decision making by Lin to go for the counterattack right away, plus pillage, is gonna put Foggy in a very difficult position. So Foggy may want to split his units right here going to be three moon wells going down at least. I'm not sure if Pillage is ready. That's a lot of Treants. Ready to harass. Yeah, 
three moon wells go down. Foggy is now super supply blocked. Dragon Haze, Battle Fire connected big time. One Raider is going down. But the TP towards the Expo. It's going to be more experience from the Treants. And Farseer almost level 4. The Farseer, of course, as we outlined, not really relevant anymore. But if the Shadow Hunter gets 5, it's going to be a tough choice then. With Shadow Hunter 5. But Lin this time was not in position for the counter attack right away. Oh, the keeper getting caught has to buy a TP. Or oh, trying to staff out. Didn't use the end snare there in time. Maybe a bit of a mistake. As the expansion now seems to finally be falling. Panda staffs back. He's got the TP. Staffing back to the army and then TPing home. Foggy's playing this well. Seems like Foggy's taking the third map. But then he's getting some good resources here from the pillage. Is he gonna take this fight? Next to the Night Elf with Moonwells, it seems like a dangerous proposition. But there's a lot of Serpent Wards on the field at the moment. Panda doesn't have too much mana anymore. Heal scroll used. That was the only one for Foggy, I think. And Serpent Wards. Snake Pit, as we've seen so many times before. Very dangerous. Shadow Hunter a bit far forward. Lin gonna boost. With a speed scroll. And these Serpent Wards give pretty good experience nowadays. Let's not forget about that. This panda must be close to level 5 now, actually. Which is very dangerous. And Foggy has an expansion coming up, bottom left. A player's forces are under attack. Then could take out all the moon wells here, though. Foggy only has 37 supply left. But the panda got level 5. Alright. The Breath of Fire damage is crazy right now. Foggy though has zero moon welds at the moment. Just used the Moonstone, but to no effect. A player's forces are under attack. This panda, though, an absolute weapon of mass destruction. Shadowhunter still far away from level 5 himself. And the expansion is about to finish. Oh, this is a long daytime now, by the way. Well, he's not going to have too much moon juice to work with here for quite a while. I think Lin's just going to go for... Base lane. He's got so many raiders. Oh, but Foggy's spreading his units very well. He knows Lin might be coming along the southern side. He's got something there. He's got something in the middle. And Lin is not interested in a fight. He knows how scary this panda is right now. A town is under siege. Oh. Stream is lagging a bit right now. This is on the Chinese side. That's so many treants, dude. Jeez. And Lin doesn't have uh, reinforced defenses, by the way. Also something to be kept in mind. A player's forces are under attack. Before he always has to be very careful about positioning. He knows that the raiders could quickly take out his buildings. Well, then creeping the red camp. This might be enough for Shadowhunter level 5. 
But with Raiders, this isn't even that easy to do. It takes quite some time. You want to minimize the damage you take here. What's the item? Hood of Cutting. Actually pretty good on the Shadow Hunter. Oh my god, this panda though. 1200 HP. Double mana pot. But again, Lennon's probably not going to go for fights. He's probably just going to go for build and kill. But once the main expires, things are going to get very difficult for Lin. He still doesn't have reinforced defenses. Uh-oh. player's forces are under attack. Panna can be staffed back at a moment's notice. But Foggy's actually going to TP first. Takes out a burrow and the shop. Then has to counter TP right away. Fairly even exchange. But I still feel like Foggy is favored. Lin's main is about to run out. I don't see how he's going to be expanding here. His shop was just killed. He doesn't have clarities. Panda choice here was great, by the way. The DPS of that hero unmatched on level 5, more or less. It seems like Lin is spending the last bit of his resources here. He's going into upkeep. Same for Foggy. A town is under siege. Oh, Shadowhunter, distracting in the main. Look at that. And then it's trying to hit the expo with the main army. But Foggy saw it coming. Very nicely done. Drunken Haze. Little fire. So much damage. Also so much mischance. Where's the lightning shield? He needs a lightning shield against these wisps. Oh my god, the next breath. Ooh, baby. The expansion is going to fall, but it's going to be so expensive for Foggy. Takes out the expo. Koda falls as well towards the end. Oh, baby. A and Lin lost a lot right there. Shadowhunter got level 5. It is level 3 Serpent Ward. It's, of course, crazy damage against the Dryads. Farseer about to be level 5. The Invis Wolves could maybe do something in base race situations. Not very useful for fighting, of course. A town is under siege. to supply for Foggy. 45 for Lin. It is level 3 Serpent Wards. <laughs> Damage against the Dryads is pretty crazy. Oh, but the Panda gets level 6. Alright, that should be it. Foggy looking good in this best of 6. Oh my god, the breath. It's just so crazy. He's not even using the ult. There we go. Uses the ult now. Cyclone on the Shadow Hunter. If the Dryads all die, the Wolves are going to be very strong again. But that's a big if. Oh my god, these pandas are just so tanky. It's crazy. And Lin is going to call it. GG and a strong comeback for Foggy. And that was on the Netty server here for map three. So for map four, we are going back to uh, to War Three Champions. And there Foggy has a real chance to claim match point. Two one lead two one lead for Foggy. To be fair, that was probably probably also the weakest maps for Lin with Tight Hunters twice and Foggy really hadn't been that great with a loss to Happy and uh, a loss to Fly. In the first two games. Then I had a draw against Lawlight. No, wait, that was before. Draw against Lawlight. Um, and most recently, a win against So and So. At, sitting at three points at the moment, 
Lin with seven points definitely far ahead of him at this point in time, but Foggy with a good chance here to catch up in points. Lin will have to win three in a row to win this series now. For Foggy, it's only two wins, two maps required. But now we're going to go to a map that's going to suit Lin much more. However, it is on War 3 Champion still. But this should be a very different game. We saw Farseer attempted twice. I would say especially the first map looked actually pretty good by Lin. I feel like the first map he could have certainly won on the second Tight Hunters game against the Panda level 4 and 5. I don't know if that's possible. But this time we should be expecting a Blade and Grunts. As I oftentimes like to say, I feel like Glenn has really mastered Concealed Hill. He knows exactly where he has to go. He knows very well about the creep routes. And he can also take it very confidently into the late game. Where 2 base 2 base can be on the docket and big army fights with 60-70 supply. Players forces are under attack. So it's a keeper first, of course. I feel like Foggy hasn't found the craziest item so far. But I guess that one Tide Hunters game where he got uh, mantle claws and circlet. Okay, that was certainly very good. And he starts off very nicely here as well with the circlet. Are under attack. Claws also for the blade. Lin using the scout peon just to pull the creeps at the beginning, slow down Foggy by a little bit. And I've seen this fog in, by Foggy now many times that he uses the keeper to go south to keep creeping and he gives a free merchant creep to the opponent. I really wonder if that is the right thing, because this is what a Blade Master loves to do. Use the Windwalk trick. Are under and uh, get the level 2 here easily. Buy a Circlet, power up the blade. Of course, Foggy trades this for level 2 also on his side. And he actually scouted it nicely with that Wisp. Oh, and Foggy setting up an AP very early during daytime. Lin may have actually seen this. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it's gonna be the second burrow being cancelled. Oh my goodness. There's a sentry ward here, so the archer will be going down. Oh, but that second burrow cancel is certainly extremely annoying. Is there enough damage to cancel the AP? I think there certainly is, right? Yeah. Alright, but the Blade Master gets level 2. Tier 2 starting now for Foggy. That is definitely a big delay. But also a big delay on Grunt number 2 and 3. Foggy gets the staff. And the Burrow should still be fast enough, certainly for the Shadow Hunter, I would imagine. Oh, there's an Agi Tome still laying there. Late Master says thank you. Lumber for Lin, also not looking the greatest, I guess. Lin usually loves to go for Lodge and Beastiery early on Tier 2. 
where the Blade Master scouting is on point. This is a big last hit right here if Link can claim it. Doesn't quite get the last hit, but gets the item. And those slippers are also very valuable. Oh, nice done by Foggy. With the Entangle, prevents the last hits. Late Master still far away from 3. But also the Keeper not quite at level 3 yet, which I guess Lin is going to be happy about. I feel like Lin making a few mistakes here with the last hits. Does claim this one though. Is this still a guy level 3 is the question. Uh, not quite sure. Lin found a lot of Agitomes, by the way. I think it was like three or four Agitomes. This Blade Master has 31 agility already, which is really good. A player's forces are under attack. It's going to be a fast level 2 for the Shadowhunter. Lin knows that the Keeper isn't level 3, isn't too scary right now, and the Blade Master is also making sure he knows what's going on. Fog is bringing Wisps into the middle. That's quite unusual. I mean, we see the Tree of Life, so we know they're certainly the not going to be are under uh, any AP pushes. Oh, Illusion on the Grunt baited the Entangle. That was pretty nice. But Foggy has lots more mana for lots more Entangle. But all in all, pretty damn good early game for Luna, I'd say. To get the Boro cancelled, that was certainly painful, but he didn't lose a Grunt, only lost one Peon, and it's looking pretty solid in terms of experience. But if Lin wants to take it into the late game, he should expand, counter expand, that is, sooner rather than later. Keeper now finally level 3, but this alchemist looks to be quite underleveled. Still only level 1. And this could be a great timing right now for Foggy to attack, but if he attacks here without an expansion coming, this could be quite all in. However, he's looking strong, so this all-in might be the right call. He can traps one of the first Huntresses, and that's going to be his level 3 if he gets the last hit. Yes, it is! I thought he was going to have a tough time a trying to deal with his Orc army right now. Catches one Shaman in the back, but that one was pretty much out of mana anyways. Oh, cancelling the Entangled would be really big right here. It would buy Lin a lot of time. And yeah, it is cancelled. Wisp detonating in the back. Lin now in a very dangerous position. He's even got Headhunters coming out for more piercing damage. Grunts onto the Archers. Serpent Wards and Headhunters onto the Huntresses. Lin microing this very well, obviously. And the Blade Master looking for kills. He gets level, gets level 3. In this kind of scenario, I think it should be crit level 2. Certainly all it seems to come down to this fight and how much damage he can deal. 135. Yep, that's a level 2 crit. Still very strong items on the blade. He set up those damage items, obviously. And the heal potion. Would have loved for Lin to bring a peon. And set up a shop up here. The 
that's taking quite some damage. Now, whew, that heal potion. Waiting for the last moment indeed. A town is under siege. And starts tier three. Okay. If you can take out the expansion here, this will be definitely a great play. I think if Foggy pushes this attack back, then tier three could be a bit too greedy. But then it's getting so many kills. Purge is there when he needs it. Blade Master healing up with a little bit more heal self. So many risks being taken out by the grunts. Shadana might be close to level four here. I feel like he hasn't used a single heal wave. Then wants to commit to this tree. He knows if he gets the tree of life, he's gonna be super far ahead. Looking to tie up the series. So he's to be careful with the blade. There's a sentinel still available. Oh, sets up the serpent board to try to get the archer. Doesn't quite. And the expo remains standing, actually. Wow. Wow. By the skin of his teeth, Foggy just so barely holds on to the expansion. A player's forces are under attack. And all of a sudden, this alchemist is going to be level 3. But Foggy has only a tiny army. He just <laughs> so, so, so barely was able to hold the expo. Needs to start mining here ASAP. The follow-up attack may very well kill him, to be honest. And if it doesn't, Lin has Bloodlust coming. Ra ra ra. And maybe even a tiny Great Hall. That's a lot of Shaman, by the way. Not too many grunts. Shadow gets level 4, Blade will get it in a moment as well, it's just too much. This is just too much. Expansion's gonna be going down now. If Lin tries to commit to it, but okay. Alchemist, TP out. When the Night Elves lose their expansion, oftentimes they will try to stabilize on one base tier 3. But little does Foggy know that Lin is already tier 3 himself. Foggy again, trying everything to keep this Tree of Life standing, but I think this time the damage is just too much. Lightning Shield on the Shadow Hunter, that's pretty cool. Fog is trying to surround it. Oh, he said the right call. I don't know, my friend. Pops him out, even gave him the Invul Potion. Lin seems to be outplaying Foggy here on map number four. Once again, Lin proves how damn good he is on Concealed Hill. Foggy taps out before we get to see the Tier 3 Fireworks. But Lin had even more in store there with the Fortress Tech if he had had more time. Would have loved to see some blade, uh, Bloodlust towards the end. And that ties up our series. All right, map number five. Wait a minute. Was this War 3 Champions or was this Netties? This was War 3 Champions, right? First we go Netties, then War 3 Champions, then Netties. Yeah, okay. So now we're going back to Netties. And Lin could claim match point on map number five. What was the first map again? Last Refuge. Yeah, that's right. Last Refuge. So, we still haven't seen what other map is going to be in there. It's going to have to be at least one more map aside from last... No, wait, that's not true. That's not true. It could just be one more time Last Refuge and Concealed.
Yeah, and Titaners Foggy looked really good. It seemed like he came in well prepared against the possible Farseer style. But Lin on Concealed is so damn good. I like mentioning it time and time again, because it's true. Last time I can remember him losing on Concealed was WGL Summer against Colorful. I mean, I'm sure he's lost some games on Concealed against Night Elf before, but or since then, rather. But uh, that's the one that stands out uh, that I remember from most recent. Of course, after our first best of six, we have another kick-ass series coming. Happy versus Fly. Which is going to be really cool. But now, we're going to find out who's going to take match point. Is it Foggy or Lin? It's again Concealed Hill. Foggy again starting in the top right. But remember, we're back on Netties now. So Lin can make use, especially of his Blade Master, even better now. On the better ping. Keep first against Blade first. There should be no question here what we're going to be seeing. Then again, going to send out the Peon Scout. The little nuances here where you can adjust your play is in the early game creep route. So Foggy always seems to want to go first Ancient of War, creep, and then into the middle towards the Spider Crab, get the level 2, and then maybe go for some base harass. It seems like Lens creeping was a little bit delayed over at the merchants a player's forces are under attack of course we have to be also saying the blade master's drops were amazing last map four agi tomes claws slippers and bought the circlet Peon pull this time doesn't seem to be too effective. Denies the experience though, and that is actually relevant. I feel like normally you want to save that peon though, don't you? Keeper starts off with a circlet, wonderful drop for him. And Lin takes out two of the creeps, but not the full camp. Interesting. And then heading north. And Foggy this time, as he knows that the scout peon is dead, he's not going to be going south towards the green. Is that an expansion? Oh, stream is lagging right now. Uh, Refresh, please. Uh-oh. The stream might be stuck. Mm, okay, is it working now? Not really. Okay. Let's take a look if we can find another stream. Da -da -da. The stream is also stuck for Infi. Okay, so it seems like their stream crashed. Uh-huh, okay. That is very unfortunate. Okay. We're gonna check out 
Foggy's first person for now because that stream is still running. Okay. So, until the clean feed works again, we're going to check out Foggy's first person. So he just killed a grunt. And he's got an expansion coming. It's close to finish. This is looking really good for Foggy, isn't it? I'm trying to see if the clean feed is up again. Not really. It's very, very laggy. This is not just for me. Also for Infi, I can see it's very laggy. Not great. Okay, we're going to stay on Foggy's first person for now. Foggy, I think, uh, did sacrifice his tier 2 speed a little bit for this. But he gets level 3, gets the expo up very safely. Oh, Blade steals the Agitome again. We've seen that before. But the Sentinel is researching when he needs it. Wait, I always thought when a tree has sentinel on it, that the wisps can't mine lumber there. But I guess they can. Alright, Alchemist joins now. And this is looking pretty damn good for Foggy so far, I'd say. Alright, I think I found a decently running stream once again. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the clean feed, so um, we're gonna have to switch to Fly's stream here real quick, guys. Sorry for this inconvenience. Um, I know this is a bit annoying. But there's unfortunately nothing about it that I can do. All right, here we go. We're on fly streams now. And Foggy was able to amass a big army just simply because of a very fast expansion. And Lin is going tier 3 again. Oh, wow. He is, in fact, tier 3 already, but he's going to have to be very cost efficient now with this. Oh, he finds the Keeper. Late Master, though, only level 2. That is not very uh, promising. It's a lot of archers. Oh my god. Lin has lots of gold, but not a big army. He goes for the tiny! Straight up! Oh wow, that seems so greedy. Okay. Double scroll, triple scroll on Foggy. 75 supply. Oh my god, the blade. Ooh. This must be Foggy's game. Must be. Lin drops the tiny. He's close to level 4 Shadowhunter, but he doesn't have quite enough experience yet. 
Oh my god, Foggy's army is so huge, dude. Jesus. I'm not sure if he even started Bloodlust. Also, engaging for for Lin is going to be really difficult. Pitlord! Oh no! Mispositioned! Oh, that's a big mistake. Oh boy. Um, yeah. It's just too much, dude. It's just too many others. And look at that positioning. Next to the barracks, through this little choke point, it's such a disaster to engage. We do have bloodlust. Ra ra ra. But I mean, uh, I mean, you know, 75 supply, eh? And I think a lot of this game comes down to Lin losing the scout peon. I think that's something you really don't want to have happen. We do have a lot of lightning shield now in the back, courtesy of these master shaman, but there's still so much night elf stuff in the mix here. It's got by Foggy. He's even going for Thorns Aura. I haven't seen that in a while. Expansion standing. Lin is trying to somehow stabilize, but Foggy said with such a huge army. And this fortress seems to be certainly going down. If Lin had been faster with his expansion just by a minute, it could have looked very different. But the timing wasn't quite there. This pit lord is dying all the time. Oh, Hex desperately trying to go for the hero kill. Oh my god, the heal spray. Last second saves him. Love the shop for Foggy in the back, going for more potions. And Lin calls it GG, and Foggy takes the win on probably Lin's strongest map, Concealed Hill, goes to the Ukrainian. By setting up the expansion early, by getting a grunt in the early game. And yeah, I think that was a lot down to that scout. All right. Everything seems to be working again. And we're ready for our decision. Foggy versus Lin, map number six. Seems like now the zoom doesn't work anymore, which is a bit unusual, but that's fine, I guess. So then, of course, going to start off with the Blade Master here once again. What's Foggy going to pick? Keeper here earlier really didn't work out, and I don't blame him to be choosing the Demon Hunter this time. As mentioned before, especially on this map, Demon Hunter has been popular for a long time. Demon Hunter and Talons would be expected. We've even seen Demon Hunter and Bears here before. Although that is a little bit of a niche strategy. Remind comes to mind, was very fond of this Blade especially, are under attack. but probably not the best choice in terms of reliable strategies. And again we see Lin doing the pull. This time, not losing the Scout Peon right away. Demon Hunter for far, you've seen that before. Goes with the Merchant right away to get the Circlet and the Dust. A player's forces are under attack. On the Blade Master, not creeping. The High Priest 
I probably saw that the item is still there. Wants to pick up the item with a blade, but the item gets denied. Nicely done by Foggy with the Ancient of War. He makes sure. No item here goes to the Blade Master. It's kind of a weird trade off. Buying the circlet, but giving up the first item from the green camp? So you're essentially down gold. You get an item. You know, he could, he could have gotten it either from the green or from the merchant like he did. But uh, yeah, you had to spend that gold, 175. Lin hunting after the wisps, but Foggy juggling them pretty well so far. Only lost one wisp at the moment. Oh, you might lose the grunt for this, by the way. Demon is chasing after the grunt, and I think he's gonna get him. Thank you very much. Dirt for dinner with the 300 bits. It says, when are we gonna be blessed with another Remo versus the world? I don't know. I haven't been playing much recently, I gotta be honest, so... Uh... Might not be the best time. Can you the creeps? Can you aggro the creeps under the moonwell? Oh, you can? Oh, that's very bad. That moonwell is definitely gonna fall. Demon are looking for some damage. It's gonna have to staff home. That main base is also looking very, very open, by the way. On the grunts are here, they can put more damage on the Demon Hunter, I guess. It's evasion first, so no mana burn at the moment. Quick reactions, saves the Wisp, but with two grunts and the Blade Master here. I think this Moonwell should easily be going down. Very uncomfortable game for Foggy. And Lin punishes him very, very well for not creeping the camp first and picking up the item. And that Moonwell certainly seems to be going down. Oh, Team Hunter trying to save it. All right, 30 HP, has to repair. Oh man, this is all so awkward though. And this is what I mean. Foggy really doesn't have too much experience at the moment with this mass talent playstyle. What builds have what weaknesses, you know, what creep routes, what openings have what weaknesses. And Lin definitely seems to find the weaknesses here. Absolutely no wall off in the main. Easy cast on the first Ancient of Wind. Not sure if he's gonna get the second one though. And he was able to save the Moonwell, to be fair. Is under siege. Grunt gets denied to the creeps. But this Ancient of Wind should be safe. Yeah. Blade Master has to back up. Wouldn't Hex and then aggressive play be super strong right here? This Demon Hunter doesn't even have mana burn right now. Kind of amazed that this Moonwell is still standing up here. But the question is, will it remain alive or is it going to be taken out at some point? Once Lin has Raider and Spirit Walker, he's going to have a big power spike. And now the Demon Hunter is almost level 2. Finally, Mana Stone for him. Not the best item though. Big deal. Does he get the Ancient of Wind? Late Pass is about to die. Has the staff out. Oof. Okay. Ancient of Wind not cancelled again. That's very important for Foggy. But man oh man, has he been under pressure this game?
Scourge, Bone Chimes, amazing item for Lin. Against talents especially, oftentimes healing is very hard to come by, especially if you play a TC. To be fair, this time he has a Shadow Hunter, so it might be a lot easier. And that Shadow Hunter has been leveling very well indeed. Almost level 3, Blade's about to get level 2. And normally, the reason why this map is good for Night Elf and for this strategy is that you can creep pretty easily into level 3 Demon Hunter, level 2 Beastmaster without getting interfered with too much. Much easier here than on most other maps for Elf. But the Demon Hunter is not level 3 yet. Missing still a good amount. And Lin wants to go for an expansion here, it seems. Setting up some towers at the expo. He's got the war mill as well, so he could go for reinforced defenses. I imagine that's what he's going to be doing. As far as he finally has the orb, finally has the tinker. Now he needs tier 3, or level 3, I should rather say. And then master training, and then he should be ready. Darkness with a 34 month resub. Alright, Demon Hunter staffing in. That should certainly be a cancel on these towers. Both cancelled. And Lin doesn't want to take a fight right now. He's very low HP on many of his units. And he doesn't have level 2 heal wave yet. Oh yeah, Darkness Experion champion. That's right. Congrats, man. Congrats on the win yesterday. Blade Master definitely seeming pretty weak with only level 1. Not that great of an inventory, but perhaps it's more up to the Shadow Hunter to really carry this game. Town is under siege. Full mana on the shadow. And still no level 2 mana burn, guys. Remember. Very, very important. Moon well taken out right away. Foggy supply blocked already. Can't even remake any talents at the moment. Needs to lose a few more, I guess. Then it's gonna evacuate. Pops the speed scroll. And trying to set up towers across the map once again, but Foggy sees it right away and starts an Ancient of War, which is pretty cool. But Lin's got the Tele Staff, he's gonna get the cancel. And this is an awkward situation for Foggy. If he moves up north to cancel the towers, he knows he's probably gonna get attacked in the main by Lin's army. So it's the Tinker with a Staff who makes his way there. The player's forces are under attack. The Blade Master can deal with that. Oh, but it's just barely enough damage. Wow. With the Quill Beast. Both players playing this very nicely right now. Foggy definitely played the early game a bit too risky. I think it's fair to say. It took a bit too much damage. But in the mid game, the way he's fighting back and making sure he doesn't slip too far behind. It's looking good. A player's forces are under attack. A town is under siege. Foggy again moving north, trying to make sure the towers don't finish. Once the towers finish, things get really difficult. He's probably gonna have to TP home. Oh, no cancel if I saw that right. And the moonwells that are exposed are always getting punished right away by Lin. Foggy... Wait, did he TP or Staff? Might just have been a Staff. Staff home also from the Demon Hunter. But the main part of the Talon army is not part of this at the moment. The 
more and more wound wells getting taken out. Quite a few serpent wards in the mix as well, and then it's so easy to target. There's no archers as part of this army. And then got the TP, wanted to be able to evacuate, he does, using only one grunt in terms of units. But Foggy still has a decent army. Close to 50 supplies still. However, Lin has a lot of gold. Thanks to pillage and good trading overall. Players' forces are under attack. And if the Tadano gets level 5, level 3 Serpent Wards against Talons are really crazy. But he's still pretty far away from that, I think. He just got level 4 a little while ago. Hero levels for Foggy, not so crazy just yet. 3, 2, 1 is kind of mediocre. It's the later levels, like 4, 4, 3, where Night Elf really tends to pull ahead. Because, of course, the Orc heroes will normally be cycloned up in the air. If Lin adds in some Berserkers, he's gonna have a ton of piercing damage. Between that and the Serpent Wards, he also has some Headhunters. Oh my god, he's got a huge army. He's about to have a absolutely a enormous army. It's gonna be 70 supply, more or less. It's not so easy to always target the right thing with the Serpent Wards, though. Doing that manually while doing everything else is very difficult to do. Oh, big level ups now for Foggy. Beastmaster and Tinker both leveling up. A player's forces are under attack. And we have an expansion coming now as well. Foggy sees it, but not planting an Ancient of War yet. Serpent Ward's being set up. Lin here perhaps trying to mainly buy time for the expo. But now Serpent Ward's getting taken out quickly, remember? They do give decent experience nowadays. The Raiders also take out quite some buildings here rather fast. Always end snares on the Demon Hunter. The Demon with the Orb of Venom is what deals the most damage right here. But the expansion was cancelled. You can see it on the mini map. Alright, Lin now committing in. Going heavily for the hero. Seems to think he has the damage. Still has some decent chance to work with. Not too, too many. Heal scroll on Foggy side as well. Seems just look like the Ukrainian's army is way, way smaller. And the towns get taken out so fast when they are exposed. Big ranged army by Lin. Seems like Lin just has too much. He got far enough ahead earlier with the pillage, with the trading. He was able to get up to a huge army with heal scrolls, and Foggy wasn't quite able to follow. And at some point, Foggy is gonna run out of healing. The Beastmaster might be the first hero kill for him this game. Or did he get another? I think that was his first hero kill. Everything now very hurtful, and he would love to have a heal scroll here as well. But even with all of units quite hurt, he still has good damage output. Foggy now with lots of gold, but no way to spend it. Lost all the moon wells, supply blocked still. Finally, opens up that supply block. And in the meantime, he's almost tier 3. 
What's the best upgrade you can get from tier 3? Walker Master Training is certainly amazing. Also Berserker Training for the Headhunters. Maybe a tiny Great Hall if you can afford it. Oh, and the Headhunter about to be level 5. That's another huge level up. Maybe you should go Heal Wave instead of Serpent Wards. It seems like he has enough damage anyways to take out the Talons. Maybe healing is what he really needs. As far as he was unable to buy... Uh, to make units for the longest time. He certainly had enough gold to go for items. Double Heal Scroll now. The Beastmaster is still dead. And absolutely no Moon Juice left for Foggy. No shop either. So far. Camp creep for Lenin, he gets the best item imaginable. Cad Gus, Pike of Insight. If he also gets master training for the walkers, he's gonna have ridiculous mana regen. And the blade, who was definitely under level 4 a long time, suddenly also makes his way to level 4. He's going mirror image. A town is I like that. Sea. He's got so much mana regen, anyways. Thanks to that wonderful drop. Players' forces are under attack. Uh, upgraded Koda Aura, of course, also. I forgot about that one. It's going to be a lot more damage for the whole army. And I think he just placed the tiny. If I saw, saw that right. Yeah, should be. Sort of accuracy is okay. It's a little bit more damage than all the talents. But how much is it really? The town is under siege. It's like... 5% or something. It's not that much. Alright, we do have Fairy Dragon as well. The mana Flare against the Walkers could be sick. I don't think you're getting caught in the front line, so we see the Emo Potion. Tinker trying to staff out. Was not able to. Kelly staff there didn't save him. Maybe separate teleportation was on cooldown, I'm not quite sure. Oh, and with the Serpent Wars against the Fairy Dragons, actually doing a very good job. And then just has so much fully fleshed out tier 3 orc army. I think that's the third time he went tier 3 in this best of six. Foggy is gonna call it GG. And Lin does tie it up. It's a 3-3 three three and a draw in the end. One point for both in the Rejuvenation Cup.